No, 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 but like, Knight's Kingdom is the best. The sets had some absolutely incredible pieces in them, and it's a totally solid concept for a theme. Not to mention, it's a brilliant template for a way that LEGO could bring back Bionicle or other kind of construction style themes in the future, at least in my opinion. And also, the sets just look cool. Knight's Kingdom had it all. So let's discuss the beauty of this rad theme, and also showcase how you could use some of the pieces in these sets for your own cool mocks. Let's do our best to inspire you to build some mocks yourself. Let's go. Sir Knight's Kingdom arrived on shelves in 2004, and left us in 2006. It boasted an array of awesome construction style figures, as well as a series of pretty cool system brick built sets that came out alongside these construction figures. And I kinda love this idea. Can you imagine if modern Ninjago had its like normal wave of system sets, and then alongside those sets, they had construction CCBS kind of character builds of all the different ninjas or whatever villains were in this specific wave of Ninjago? I think that'd be pretty sick. So I don't know, that could be kind of cool. Maybe something like that could happen again in the future. I mean, I guess you could say we kind of had that with the Star Wars Ultra Build sets, but, you know, it'd be interesting if LEGO brought out an original IP of their own, not a licensed theme, and did something like that again. I think it's a really cool idea. Who knows if that was successful with Knight's Kingdom or not, but it'd be really interesting if they did that again. At least I think so. And hey, while we're dreaming and imagining the future, this was also something that Knight's Kingdom had, and these... Um, whatever they are. These came in some Nesquik cereal boxes as a part of a sort of like promotional thing. You buy the box, you get a free toy inside of it sort of thing. I hope LEGO does more of this in the future too. I mean, we had it with the McToran McDonald's sets and all that sort of stuff. So I would love to get fat and happy again by eating unhealthy cereal just to get some LEGO from it. That'd be fun. I don't think they'd do that anymore. But if they did, I'd be down. Anyway, let's talk about the sets. So very similar to Bionicle, all of the figures pretty much had the exact same frame and they were just armoured and coloured in different ways. Now a lot of these sets use these same kind of ratchet joints that you saw in some of the early waves of Exoforce sets. It's a pretty sturdy, pretty simple design, and it kind of mixes system with some of your sort of Technic or Bionicle connections in uh, some pretty cool ways. So in a sense there's some nice applications for mocking, although I think your typical CCBS style you know, building system is kind of just the way to go, but uh, they're interesting pieces at least. The sets also have these very nicely detailed like torso pieces, and they have some really fun functionality to them, and honestly I think there's some pretty great play features that can come out of this here. Now while I enjoy this from like a toy perspective, because it's fun to pull these levers and have them slice things and stuff like that, I don't particularly like this piece, you know, I think once again just using a typical CCBS torso piece or an Anika torso or something would be easier to mock with. But that being said, never underestimate a good piece. Here's a mock by Joxon, it's called King Crusher, and we can see these torso pieces uh, which actually came on the set 8790, King Matthias. Uh, and these kind of form these interesting like boxing gloves on this mock here. So interesting to see this piece being used in such a clever way and forming kind of a brilliant sort of accent point on this mock here. Uh, and also taking advantage of some of the nice kind of printed details on these pieces too. So hey, I thought they were useless, but we can see them being used brilliantly here on this mark. So that's pretty cool. We can also see the King Matthias crown being used here, and we're going to see that being used in a couple different mocks here, so stay tuned for that. Additionally, we can see some of these Knight's Kingdom armor pieces being used uh, perfectly as actual shoulder armor. Now, these are seen in a few different styles across each of the different construction Knight's Kingdom sets, and yet yeah, they're shoulder armor pieces, so he's used shoulder armor pieces as shoulder armor pieces, but hey, it works. Nothing wrong with that. And honestly, I think these pieces are just very well made. If you want to build something that's very fantasy or medieval inspired, these are just kind of a must have because they're designed to look exactly like that. So why not use them? It's like on this mock here by Redverse, uh, which has a very long name that I'm not even going to try to pronounce. Uh, it's a lizard folk, so it's uh, very you know fantasy-esque in that regard. Uh, so great idea to not only use them as shoulder armor, but also use them as a little helmet for the top of his head there. So lovely to see them very perfectly integrated with you. You know, the typical Bionicle style pieces there uh, and how much it complements that fantasy look. Very cool. I think it's also worth noting on the actual sets themselves, the pretty helmet pieces that you get on these sets. There's just a brilliant level of detail to them and just some really striking and unique designs to them. Just so filled with character, you know? On this mock by Nobu Terry we can see one of these actual mask pieces being used uh, and that's kind of the only Knight's Kingdom piece that's being used on this mock. The rest is very sort of CCBS heavy so it's great to see that these two pieces perfectly complement one another. 
I do find it very interesting that, uh, you know, this theme came out in 2004 and yet pieces that came out in like 2011 and were used way later, you know, your, your typical CCBS style pieces, the two just perfectly complement one another. That's one of the fun things about Lego. How everything just works nicely together no matter the age of it. Uh, so that's, I don't know, that's pretty cool. It's just, I just think it's so interesting that this theme that wasn't even really Bionicle-esque, but it was still kind of very loosely construction, just is, is so perfect for your Bionicle-focused characters. That being said, I feel like the face designs on these knights, maybe not that great. <laughs> I don't know. I think the printing of it is very cool and on the toy it looks lovely, but I don't know how great it's going to look on any sort of specific mark. I think just, uh, you know, sticking with a brick built face or something like that might look a little bit prettier, but uh, I don't know. Not a massive fan. One thing I do appreciate about these face designs though is, again, they're very packed full of character. There's something else about Knight's Kingdom that I love, and I think it's, it's, it's the story that comes with it. There's a really rich and brilliant story behind Knight's Kingdom, and I remember loving it as a kid, and I can still appreciate it today. Some of these images I'm showing you now are from the instruction manuals, as well as some trading cards and storybooks and different things that accompany the theme. And man, they're just so cool. Also, the art is just really well done. Um, I think a lot of it is done by Mike Rayhawk. I've included a link in the description to his blog, uh, which has a bunch of different images of his work, and he sort of talks a little bit about doing it and all that sort of stuff. Um, so it's a really interesting read. Definitely check it out. But uh, yeah, I think that's just one of the reasons that we love something like Bionicle so much was the characters and the story. And the fact that this theme dives really deep into that as well, you know, creates this rich world with such like fun and cool characters. It's just exciting, you know? I remember loving as a kid seeing characters like Jayco grow and evolve from uh, a rookie knight into a you know, more experienced knight and then becoming the king in one of the later waves. I loved that. And I just love it when Lego creates rich and powerful worlds like this. And yeah, Knight's Kingdom was that. It's so cool. I mean, especially like one fun thing that they did uh, is if you remember one of the other LEGO original themes called Alpha Team, uh, you might remember the main villain of that line whose name was Ogle. Uh, by the way, Ogle is LEGO backwards, which is something that took me way longer to realize than I expected, and it blew my mind when I found out. Yeah, Ogle, according to LEGO themselves, uh, is a uh, direct descendant of Lord Vladik, who is the villain of Knight's Kingdom. Uh, so hey, guess what? We've entered the Lego Cinematic Universe where everything's connected, and I, I think that sort of stuff is fun, you know? The story, the world, the depth behind it and everything, all these awesome art pieces, everything, there's just so much inspiration you can get from this today, and I just love that. So back to the actual pieces in the set now, uh, they come with some really nice weapon pieces. And again, these could be very easily integrated into your typical Bionicle mocks. They just look awesome. And something else that looks awesome are all the shield pieces that you get in each of the Construction Knight sets. These are just, I, I don't know, really cool. There's such a high level of detail to them. And I, I don't know, it's just something you don't really see today. I feel like today these would just be like printed pieces. But the fact that these are unique molds with different colors and everything is so striking. It's so cool. Here's a mock by Poor Disadvantage. Now he's just used this shield piece as an actual shield. But I don't know, it perfectly complements the mock. I love when people add, you know, little stuff like this. Uh, I think just the pop of that shield there is just a little cherry on top that takes this mock to another level. I just love it. We can also see on this mock uh, a nice use for some of the helmet pieces that come on these sets, uh, integrating it into a uh, Star Wars Ultra build head. I believe this is Ray's head here specifically. Uh, and uh, yeah, sort of flipping it on its side there so it looks like the helmet sort of flipped up in that regard. That's so clever and such a great way of sort of reinventing uh, how you could use that piece. I just adore that. Uh, we can also see some of the uh, leg armor pieces being used as leg armor here. But again, they just look great and work well when you combine it with some of these sword pieces that are being used here too. Uh, and again, we can also see shoulder armor pieces being used as shoulder armor, but also as torso armor this time. So it looks pretty cool. This, this mock is just packed full of Knight's Kingdom pieces. So it's great to see uh, if you really, really put all of them in there, just how good it can look. Especially using those crown pieces as like sort of armor detail of sorts on the thighs there genius. These sets also boast some unique colors. Things like speckled dark bluish gray and speckled black copper. These are awesome additions. And they don't really appear in many other sets as well, so it's kind of exciting. 
We can see an awesome mock here by Dylan Meaves where he makes great use of these colors by just spamming some of these armor pieces and then a mask that goes along with it. And then he's kind of exclusively playing with this unique color. And it's also really cool to see the results uh, of a mock that's just exclusively limiting itself to really just repeating this one piece and then partnering it with other stuff because uh, they just look awesome. And then once again, we can see this mock using a few other Knight's Kingdom pieces uh, to build this nice throne design, as well as once again, using that beautiful crown piece for the crown on King Timmy's head here. So a brilliant mock by Dylan Meaves that makes great use of these pieces. So from their cool metal canisters to the brilliant character designs, as well as the awesome storytelling, Knight's Kingdom had it all. These sets have such cool colors, such unique pieces, and hey, if you don't have any, it's worth getting some. It'll be great fun to just play around with these pieces and see what you can do with them. So hopefully this episode inspired you a little bit, and if you've got some of these pieces, you can put them to good use. Happy building. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.